Trump, get Tony Fauci's face off your scumbag campaign ads and get Tony Fauci's name out of your scumbag mouth. Trump's campaign revealing in a new TV interview that no, it will not remove a doctored soundbite of Dr. Anthony Fauci in a Trump campaign ad, and it intends to release more ads that make it seem as if Fauci is endorsing Trump for re-election. Even as every day Trump's place in history as the nation's most vile mass murderer negligently or intentionally becomes more and more cemented, even as the infection rate in this country has now rocketed upwards by 25% from just two weeks ago, even as the specter of a second wave crashing into us before the first wave has finished with us becomes more and more inevitable. Even as Trump's culpability for the deaths of nearly 218,000 Americans and a projected 150,000 more before New Year's becomes more and more inescapable. Even with all that, a slick little ex-talk show host, a Trump campaign advisor named Steve Cortez, tells the CBS station in West Palm Beach that the altered clip of Fauci will stay in the ad and, quote, I'm glad the words are in there, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are more such ads coming down the pike, which also include Dr. Fauci praising the response of the executive branch under the leadership of President Trump. The leadership of President Trump. It's like the leadership of the People's Republic of China during the famine of the early 1960s. The leadership of President Trump? It's like the leadership of the Soviet Union during the nuclear disaster at Chernobyl. The leadership of President Trump? It's like the leadership of the United Kingdom during the Irish potato famine of the 1850s. The leadership of President Trump? It means disease and death and victims dying alone, separated from family. The leadership of President Trump means an economic disaster and another one to come this winter and probably a third one next year. The leadership of President Trump means trailer park trash idiots pulling guns on people because they are wearing masks, because the idiots have been brainwashed by Trump and his flying monkeys. The leadership of President Trump means he makes infomercials telling you to take experimental drugs you can't get made by companies he owned stock in. Means him telling you to try to ingest disinfectants. Means him telling you to try to remember it'll vanish like a miracle. Means him now turning to a declaration supporting the mass suicide pact that is herd immunity. A declaration supposedly signed by 15,000 scientists and medical practitioners, except a lot of them are just massage therapists, and other signatures are from dozens of names like Dr. Johnny Bananas, Dr. Person Fake Name, and, unbelievably, Dr. I.P. Freely. The leadership of President Trump means him telling you on February 24th that the stock market was going to do great despite everything while his advisors were warning billionaires at the same time of the terrible truth and they sold their stocks and they are richer today with money that should be yours. The leadership means telling you on February 26th that, quote, we're totally prepared. When you have 15 people and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero, that's a pretty good job we've done. Telling you that when 19 days earlier he had told Bob Woodward, you just breathe the air and that's how it's passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flus. The leadership of President Trump means him redirecting $330 million from the HHS budget in order to make commercials starring Dennis Quaid telling you how great a job Trump has done on the pandemic, killing your friends, neighbors, and loved ones. And this creature not only exploited the apolitical Tony Fauci, who had to fight the COVID-19 virus while also fighting and also humoring a far more deadly and far less intelligent organism called Donald Trump. Not only do they refuse to cut out the doctored clip, not only threatens to use more, not only sends out this preening sleazy bastard Cortez to boast about it, but then attacks Fauci in his campaign bund rallies that violate every pandemic protocol and will doubtless accelerate the second wave and put more notches of viral death on Donald Trump's belt. It is impossible to believe that just 20 years ago, even after the far-right mob of Rush Limbaugh and Roger Ailes and Newt Gingrich and their fellow travelers had begun to use democracy to try to destroy democracy, 
even long after the infamous Willie Horton commercial, that the biggest debate over TV commercials in the presidential campaign of 2000, Bush v. Gore, was the accusation that Bush ad man Alex Castellanos had resorted to subliminal advertising in a commercial predicting higher prescription drug prices under Gore. For a split second, one word appeared by itself on television screens. The word was rats. There was a controversy over whether or not a presidential campaign commercial had the word rats in it. Flash forward to today, and the vile Trump advertising filth had taken a full, long quote from Fauci and reduced it to nine carefully chosen, precisely edited, falsified words. I, as one of many people on a team, Fauci said to Fox News in March, I'm not the only person since the beginning when we even recognized what this was. I have been devoting almost full time on this. I'm down at the White House virtually every day with the task force. I'm connected by phone throughout the day and into the night, and I'm talking 12, 1, 2 in the morning. I'm not the only one. There's a whole group of us that are doing that. It's every single day. So I can't imagine that under any circumstances that anybody could be doing more. The advertising men selling the utter criminal failure of this creature Trump reduced those 99 words of Fauci's quote to, I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more. And they made it look as if Fauci was talking about Trump. Their defense and this idiot Cortez repeated it in the Florida TV interview, was that Fauci is a public servant, not some random private citizen, and he did say those words in the ad. So what's the problem? The problem is burn in hell is the problem. We have so normalized Republican dishonesty in this country that there are literally no means to accomplish this smallest of actions on behalf of decency. Never mind trying to get the truth out of Trump. There is no soul in that human-shaped mass of dung. We can't even force him to honor Fauci's simple request to be left out of this disaster. God knows Trump can find another clip of, a clip of somebody actually praising him like the Russians about to be executed used to praise Stalin. How about something from that Dr. I.P. Freely from the herd immunity petition or Dr. Person fake name? I'm surprised this idiot Trump hasn't sent for Dr. Freely already. But we have been ignoring Republican media chicanery since one of its masters linked triple amputee Senator Max Cleland to Osama bin Laden in a Georgia Senate commercial in 2002. We have been thinking it's just part of the game since the Swift Boat ads of 2004. That's when George W. Bush turned a blind eye to commercials that somehow made John Kerry's actual service in Vietnam the source of ridicule and made Bush's evasion of service in Vietnam magically disappear. We did not stop the rising tide then and we are drowning underneath it now. Fauci has not been flawless in his job when because Trump did not star stock the preparedness larder we didn't have enough masks for healthcare workers. Fauci told you and I to use other face coverings or go without. For this one Fauci error of necessity, there are a thousand or 10,000 Trump errors of greed and self-dealing and imbecility. For this country's error of electing a psychopath, a creature, there are 218,000 dead and 800 more by morning. Trump is guilty of a million crimes, just about the pandemic. How he manipulates a soundbite of Tony Fauci does not rank very high among them. Nevertheless, I close where I began. Trump, get Tony Fauci's face off your scumbag campaign ads and get Tony Fauci's name out of your scumbag mouth. me off. Let me give you the headlines quickly before I wish you a good weekend. Uh, no emergency use of a vaccine earlier than the third week of November, if even then, according to the head of Pfizer, who actually went on Twitter to explain this and why it's going to take till at least the third week of November to even try for an emergency authorization. This is a very smart thing for him to do in this age of conspiracy nuts. Speaking of them, Chris Christie on Good Morning America after recovering from a very serious bout of COVID-19. We need to be telling people that there is no downside to you wearing masks. And in fact, there can be a great deal of upside. We have been. You have been denying it and killing people. 
and you're still being ambiguous about it. No downside, great deal of upside. It saves lives, moron. Glad you recovered. Number two, Trump was apparently warned by his own officials at the end of last year and the beginning of this one that any Biden smears that poor, crazy, no longer loyal to the United States of America, Rudy Giuliani, might bring to him were in fact Russian disinfo. They were not valid and probably faked, and Giuliani had been, for all intents and purposes, compromised by the Russians. My assumption is Trump responded to this news by applauding. Number three, Trump's campaign manager, no, the new one, not any of the others who are all in jail or have been arrested, has been telling staffers, according to a report put out this afternoon by Axios, that there are three pathways for Trump to win after, after he has won Ohio and Florida. Both of those are not certainties by any stretch of the imagination. But if he wins Ohio and Florida, all he has to do is win Arizona, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, or Arizona, North Carolina, and Michigan, or North Carolina, Michigan, and Nevada. The polling this week in North Carolina ranges from even to Biden plus two, Biden plus five, Biden plus six. Arizona and Michigan and Nevada wouldn't depend on them from either side. And I'll close with this. About those dueling twin debates, or what was to have been the debate turned out to be the town halls instead the most salient headline was Trump rather stupidly confirming that he has more than $400 million in personal debt to entities he will not reveal. Even if, as he says, it's a drop in the bucket of his overall worth, it's $400 million, and he owes it to people who keep saying, you have my money. If you had not heard this, after the live coverage on ABC ended, Joe Biden stayed in the stage that he was doing his town hall from, stayed for at least half an hour afterwards, answering the questions of the people who didn't get to be on TV. That speaks for itself. You may have a complaint about Joe Biden. I have. I've known him a long time. I don't think he's perfect. But the fact that he stayed there is all you really need to know about him in this election. That and the fact that the other side thinks that they humiliated him by comparing him to Mr. Rogers. The ratings are in, and this is the happy note of the week. Biden won the ratings battle, even though Trump was on multiple NBC networks. In fact, the early number is 13.9 million to 13 million viewers, nearly a million viewers more than Trump got. That is an awful lot, and I am awaiting Trump's tweet calling all these ratings fake, fixed, crooked, and demanding the arrest of somebody from NBC. Probably Jerry Seinfeld. Good night and good luck.